So the celestial sphere, we're going to use it as a model to help us understand motion on the sky. And it can be a little bit confusing. Um, so that's why I'm going to walk you through it in Starry Night and try to give you an idea of just how it all works together, because some the figures can be confusing. Um, but here are some terms to pay attention to. So um, our horizon, zenith, and nadir are all um, things that depend on our position on the planet. And then the celestial equator, north celestial pole, and south celestial pole, um, those are all related to the sphere. So those are important coordinates on the sphere. And then the ecliptic is a special path uh, so we'll talk about all of these terms and I'll show you exactly what they all mean. Um, the, a sp any sphere has an axis and an equator. And so this is no different from the celestial sphere. Here the earth is shown with its um, axial tilt. It's actually a little exaggerated in this image. And earth's equator is this, um, you know, this black line. And so projected out into space, earth's equator um, projected out gives us the celestial equator, which is this blue ring. And then the uh, north celestial pole and south celestial poles are the poles of the planet spinning on its axis projected out into space. All right, and so then depending on where you sit on the planet, it'll appear that that north celestial pole is in a different place, right, depending on your latitude. And then those other terms, um, zenith is just the point directly overhead. Nadir is the point directly underfoot, and horizon is wherever the sky meets the ground, so the horizontal surface, which you're probably familiar with that term. All right, so here's the Earth, and uh, this celestial equator here is marked, and we're looking at the planet with no axial tilt um, in mind. So the North Pole is just directly up, South Pole is just directly down. And so in the celestial sphere, if we follow our North Pole up, then we see the North Celestial Pole. And um, notice that there's a bright object right next to that North Celestial Pole, and that's Polaris. So that's our pole star, uh, we call it the North Star. So that's what's at the center of all of our star trails. And likewise, we can look down at the South Celestial Pole, which we can never see because it's, in the, it's only visible in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, and there is no bright star around the South Celestial Pole, so there is no South Star. Um, but they do have some cool things in the Southern Hemisphere sky. Um, this is the Large Magellanic Cloud and this is the Small Magellanic Cloud. You might remember those from Astronomy 123. They're satellite galaxies to the Milky Way. So that's pretty rad. We don't have those in the Northern Hemisphere. Okay, so that's our, um, the Celestial Sphere basics. And the celestial equator is just uh, projected out directly from our equator. I want to point out something about the north celestial pole. So let me go home to my planet here. And I'm going to go to Eugene. So let's look for Polaris, the pole star. OK, so here's Polaris. And now I want you to keep an eye on Polaris and see about um, how high off the horizon it is. So here, um, I guess I can actually measure, I don't know if this will give me my angle. Um, yeah, so if I draw it all the way down to the horizon, it says about 43 degrees. Eugene's at almost 45 degrees latitude. So our pole star is about 45 degrees up uh, off the horizon which is pretty cool because it's like handy dandy measurement tool to have a, 45, a perfect 45 degree angle out in, in uh, when you're looking at the sky. So let me watch Polaris and then I'm going to go somewhere else. So I'm going to go to a latitude that's still in the northern hemisphere, but a little farther south. So I choose to Gusagalpa, Honduras, um, just because I've spent some time in Honduras. So I have a thing for Honduras. So now notice that Polaris jumped way farther down on the horizon. And if we measure it, then we can get an estimate here of the latitude of Tagus. And it looks like about 13 degrees latitude. So we're getting pretty close to the equator. And now let's check out what this looks like if we go all the way to the equator. Um, let's see, Quito 
Ecuador is on the equator. And now you can see that Polaris is right on the horizon. Okay, cool. So now we're watching the stars as they're in motion. And you can see now exactly how they appear to move. They are rising in the east and setting in the west, just the same as the sun. Um, and now you can see why they all appear to draw circles around the North Star, right? So everything, because of the Earth's motion, appears to rotate around that single fixed point. If you were in the Southern Hemisphere, then you, they would all appear to be rotating around the South Celestial Pole instead. So here's our Big Dipper. So also because of this uh, motion, so this is what, um, you know, what the stars appear to do from over the course of basically one night. But if we look from night to night, there's other interesting motions on the sky that we want to understand. So I want to show you uh, Jupiter. And I want to show you Jupiter at a specific time of year. 2020, let's go backwards in time to August. That's my partner's birthday. OK, so here's Jupiter and here's Saturn on the sky. And the reason I chose this time of year was because many of you might remember Comet Neowise this summer. And when I was taking, uh, well, trying to take pictures of Comet Neowise, Jupiter and Saturn were on the opposite side of the sky. And so it was fun to go out and just kind of, you know, get out of our big binoculars and try to look for Jupiter's moons, which we can see through the binoculars. I was impressed. Um, so anyway, if I look at um, stepping forward by basically one day, so here I am looking at Jupiter and Saturn, and I um, jump forward by one day, then you can see if I click forward through many days, eventually Jupiter and Saturn at this time that I've chosen of night looks like I'm at 21, so that's about 9 p.m. They're still visible, right? And we can still see them even now, so this is like in a few, few days from now. Uh, this is showing us in Toronto, I guess, so it's a little bit different. Um, you can look for Eugene yourself. Um, anyway, eventually these are going to set, right? And then they won't be visible at this time of night anymore. But what do you think I should do if I want to see Jupiter and Saturn from Toronto on October 30th? Should I look at an earlier time or a later time? Any suggestions? Maybe an earlier time? Try an earlier time. All right, so let's see what, what happens if I go back by just one hour. Then they're just above the horizon again. So if I want to look at the planets, you know, I need to know where they are with respect to the horizon. And as we go forward in, uh, in the year, I'll have to look at them earlier and earlier to see them at the same position on the sky. The reason I choose Jupiter and Saturn is because they appear to move very slowly. Uh, so this is the next motion that we will um, explore. Um, so I want to check in here. So if I have a star that's on the north point of the horizon, then in six hours, where's the most likely position of that star? Oops, based on the motions that you've just seen. So um, the north star right now is Polaris. Um, but it won't always be Polaris, and it hasn't always been Polaris either. Um, so even the ancient Greek astronomers knew that the Earth's tilt wobbled. And the reason they figured this out was because Hipparchus was cataloging stars and their brightnesses and looking at data from uh, people more ancient than himself and realized that Polaris wasn't always the pole star. Um, and so there's actually kind of a wobble. The Earth wobbles like, like you know, if you spin a top, eventually it starts to wobble around. The Earth does the exact same thing for the exact same physical reasons. Um, and so the, uh, the axis processes over 26,000 years. And so in more ancient times, Thubin was the pole star. Um, and actually the zodiac that we use today, if you look at um, where the constellations actually are at different times of year, they don't match the ones, you know, the constellations you're used to from your horoscope because they were mostly made when Thuban was the pole star, which I think is pretty amusing. And so um, the North Star changes and, you know, it's only by sheer luck that there is a star near the, the North Celestial Pole. And we just saw like the South Pole isn't quite so lucky. All right, so that's called precession, the movement of the axis over long periods of time. 
All right, so we can tell our location and time by the stars and we kind of just um, explored some of those possibilities. So now I wanna ask you, um, looking at this image from the Gemini Observatory, um, how many hours was this exposure of the star trails and what latitude was this picture taken from? So take about 30 seconds here, um, think about it, um, write it in the chat, but don't hit send yet. And I'll tell you when to hit send. Um, you can tell me numbers or you can just tell me your idea for what you would do to figure out how long the exposure is in the latitude. Animation for that part. So if I turn on my circle, um, I'm just kind of, you know, also guesstimating the same way you are. Um, what angle does that star trail make? And if this, if one full circle would be 24 hours to, for, you know, Earth to reach the same position as it was before so that the star reached the same position it, is, it was before, then that means that a semicircle would be 12 hours, a quarter circle would be six hours. So I agree that looks like something between six and 12, so roughly nine hours. So that's how I um, estimated the exposure time. And then uh, measuring the latitude, you're exactly right, just measuring up off of the horizon. And when I did this um, to make this PowerPoint slide, I had to rotate this uh, by 30 degrees to get it off the horizon pointing toward the North Star. So I would say that this is about 30 degree latitude. You're right. And you can check because Gemini is in Hilo, Hawaii. So it's easy to look up and find, yes, that Hilo is at about 30. Okay, so this idea of telling your location and time by the stars is nothing new and ancient people knew about this, right? The Polynesians, for example, um, used stellar navigation. I think they're the earliest known example of humans using stellar navigation um, at sea. 